Doasco observes World Water Day 2014, China and Dominica celebrate a decade-long relationship, and the NEP has launched its community employment program in Miro. Thank you for joining us for another edition of National Focus. I am Mervyn Matthew. And I'm Jana Hector. Stay with us for details of the headline stories and others after the break. The Ministry of Health's monthly mass aerobics is on. Dress in your exercising gear and join the Ministry of Health and Fitness Plus on Friday, March 28th from 5 p.m. on the Bayfront for one hour of exercising and dancercising in the fight against chronic non-communicable diseases, reduce obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes and cancer. Yes, make it a date and participate in the Ministry of Health mass aerobics session Friday March 28th from 5 p.m. on the Rosa Bayfront. Remember, your health is your responsibility. Thank you for staying with us. The government of Dominica and the Embassy of the People's Republic of China on Saturday hosted a cocktail reception at the conference center of the State House to officially celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Dominica-China relationship. Dominica and China formally established diplomatic relations on March 23, 2004. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, in looking back on the 10-year relationship, described it as fruitful one which has been mutually beneficial for both countries. The Prime Minister used the occasion to speak on the depth of the relationship between China and Dominica. I could easily adumbrate the visible, the tangible and measurable benefits derived by Dominica as a result of that decision. But as much as we cherish tangibles such as the Windsor Park Stadium, the EO Libla Highway, the State College, and low-cost housing at Buffett State and the Carib Territory, and why we look forward with eager anticipation to the construction of the new National Hospital, the construction of the new Newtown Primary School, the construction of the new bridge at York Valley, and relocation of displaced families on the west coast of Dominica. None of these overwhelmingly influences the contentment I have with the depth of our relations. My appreciation for the friendship that has been forged is not influenced by, which, by that which can be seen or measured. Rather, it is built on the knowledge of knowing that China is there, always there for Dominica. The 10th anniversary, according to Prime Minister Skerritt, offers an opportunity to reflect on the evolution of the Dominica-China relationship which is based on mutual respect and trust. There are those in this country who are still waiting for the fine writing associated with the gift of the Windsor Park Stadium or the improved highway from Roseau to Portsmouth. They cannot believe that there is not and has never been a quid pro quo arrangement. This, ladies and gentlemen, is not how the government and people of China operate. Mutual trust, honor and understanding mean a lot to the People's Republic of China. This is also what this government stands for and has reciprocated over the past 10 years of our growing and deepening friendship. The Prime Minister also used the occasion to express appreciation for the open door policy extended to the government and the people of Dominica. He also reiterated his government's commitment to the One China policy. I ask now, Ambassador, that you convey to Premier Li, the government and people of China, our warm and sincere appreciation for their continuous acts of solidarity, love, and commitment to friendship. Dominica, under my leadership, reiterates firmly 
its commitment to the One China policy. That will not waver, and under the government that I have the honor to lead, that will never change. Prime Minister Skerry declared the event on Saturday as the start of the second 10-year cycle of healthy relations built on honor, trust, and mutual respect. Chinese Ambassador to Dominica, His Excellency Li Xiangning, said the past 10 years have been a great journey based on the foundation of strong bilateral relations. A new journey that has opened door to a wide range of exchanges and cooperation, a new journey that has brought tangible benefits to our two countries and peoples. A new journey that is both steady and quick paced, that can be seen with good reason as ten times longer and maturer. Allow me to express my sincere gratitude to all of you who have cared for, nurtured and supported this relationship over the past ten years. Thank you all very much. The Chinese ambassador is looking forward to many more years of solid friendship. The Chinese government attaches great importance to the China-Dominica relations. I would like to join hands with the Dominican side in pursuing greater development of our bilateral relationship. My colleagues and I at the embassy would like to work with you closely to deepen our friendship and mutual trust, enhance mutual understanding, and expand the pragmatic cooperation in the months and years to come. As part of the celebrations, the Nanjing National Orchestra last Friday staged a cultural performance at the Arawak House of Culture. A year of joint activities is planned for 2014 to commemorate the first decade of Dominica-China diplomatic relations. Viewers of Channel 7 may look out for a special feature immediately following this newscast produced by the Government Information Service on the Dominica-China relations over the last 10 years. The Ministry of Trade and Employment has launched the third element of its National Employment Program, the Community Employment Aspect, in Miro last Thursday. This took place with a small donation ceremony where tools were handed to nine young farmers of the Miro community. The aim of the program is to empower individuals in various communities to be self-employed in the areas where they are best skilled. We are undertaking as part of our national employment strategy, the commencement of community employment initiatives that are geared at uh, not only stimulating employment among our youth, but ensuring that uh, they're able to do things in the areas in which they are best skilled. The National Employment Program was officially launched in December 2013 and continues to successfully maintain various elements of the program. The National Employment Program, which was launched in December, has sought to provide employment opportunities for young people, adults alike around the island, and there are several elements of the program, some of which have been launched already and have been in full swing. We have had the internship program, which has been ongoing, which has started from December, and we have almost 200 individuals who are placed with various institutions, both public and private sector uh, organizations around the island. In addition to that, the apprenticeship training programs that have been done through the Ministry of Employment, Trade, Industry and Diaspora Affairs in hospitality, stone cutting, uh, manicure, pedicure <laughs> and um, culinary arts. The individuals who have graduated from these programs have now been placed Prevo commended the young men of Miro for coming forward with that initiative and seeking the support of the parliamentary representative and the NEP in this venture. Support will be provided in two main areas, equipment and finance. This is an initiative, I am very happy to say, which started before the National Employment Program and I am, it is not something that we are pushing on to the young people, but it is an initiative that they have come to us with and we have pledged our support and we are supporting in two areas. We will be providing some tools and equipment which, you, which we will hand over a little bit later. And also to give you a, a start, to give you a push, we will be providing stipends to the young men through the National Employment Program for a period of six months which will be paid through the St. Joseph Village Council. The nine young farmers formed the first group to benefit from the National Employment Program's Community Employment Initiative. 
Honorable Kelva Daru, parliamentary representative for the St. Joseph constituency, commended these young men for being first on board, noting that they are the ones who took the initiative to approach government for assistance. I must commend all of the young men who have taken this initiative on board because, first of all, this is a move in the right direction. It is something that I believe will advance not only yourselves, but the community of Miro. A variety of farming tools were handed over to assist the young men in their farm work. These included pickaxes, cutlasses, sprayers, boots, and garden forks. Honorable Daru noted that this gesture indicates government's commitment to the agricultural sector and its direct involvement in getting young persons interested in the trade. I believe this initiative in the community of Miro goes a long way towards the advancement of the agricultural sector in this country. The parliamentary representative was happy that he was able to keep his promise to assist the young farmers and pledge his continued support to their future endeavors. Inputs for the farms will be made available through the Ministry of Agriculture. The group was also encouraged to work closely with the Ministry of Agriculture and their extension officers. Karin Prevo, permanent secretary in the Ministry of Employment, also pledged the NEP's assistance in locating markets for their produce. In addition to the tools donated, the young men will receive financial assistance from the NEP through the St. Joseph Village Council. A check for the first installment was presented to the chairman of the council to pay fortnightly stipends of $400. The young men were eager to share their gratitude for such support. A special thanks to my parent, Mr. Kelvadaru, who has been working with me. Even though sometimes he probably feel like I was nagging him, but <laughs> I had to push for it. And we challenged him and he delivered. I'm really grateful for the initiative that was taken by the um, NEP, also the um, PAL rep, to actually bring us the tools and so forth. It will be a, a great push because nowadays we, we, we need like a help. He was doing our, our own thing already, so that push will be actually um, a very good thing for us. My challenge to you all now is to take up the responsibility and to ensure that you remain committed to your farms, that you remain committed to the work that is before you, and that you manage your farms properly and in an efficient manner. The launch of the community employment facet in Meru means that the community will essentially serve as a model for other communities across the island. The island has taken one huge step ahead with discussion on the national gender policy and what it should specify. That discussion, which took place at the Fortune Hotel, served as a way to include nationals in the formulation of this policy that will seek to promote fairness and equality among men, women, and children. Facilitated by VF Inc., the consultation was opened with remarks by Dr. Valda Henry, CEO of VF Inc. She commented on the necessity of a national gender policy. When we look at the data in Dominica on violence and abuse, Yes, it's violence against women, it's against the female, but the data is really stark and worrying because it demonstrates that out of that violence, while 75% being women, 75% of that data demonstrates it's young people, persons below the age of consent, which is 16. And that is worrying, and out of that, the majority being young girls. And the abuse of the greatest frequency is sexual abuse and molestation. And so if, as a society, we cannot come together to protect our children, what can we come together for? So if there was no other call, it is the call to protect our children. But with that call is also the call to protect our women. The Minister for Community Development and Gender Affairs, Honorable Gloria Schillingford, delivered the featured address at Friday's forum. She listed the specific areas which the policy will target. The existing National Policy and Action Plan for Gender Equity and Equality in the Commonwealth of Dominica provides a framework for promoting equality between men and women to advance national development and so its overall goal is to promote gender equity 
equality, social justice, and sustainable human and economic development. This is crucial at this time when there are many gender issues facing our nation in areas of critical importance to the society, including leadership and governance, economic growth, agriculture and food security, climate change, and national resource management, labor and employment, poverty reduction and social protection, health and well-being, education and human capital development, violence and human security. Rosie Brown, director of the Bureau of Gender Affairs, went into further detail of the national gender policy. We know a policy, the policy as such, on, which is national, gender, national policy on gender equity and equality, is a framework that seeks to provide a way forward for, for the country to advance gender equity and equality, the, how we treat with concerns and issues of women and men in the social, com economic, um, and the spiritual and other aspect of life in Dominica for the development of the country. And let me say that where a policy, a gender policy in its, is in place and is implemented, it helps advance development and works for the economic and social development of a country and its human, res human resource. With such focused attention on gender equality, Brown says Dominica has been ahead of the region on the matter of a national policy on gender. The policy, though commonly thought to be focused on women, is specifically aimed at both men and women as well as children. Although spearheaded by government, the formulation of such a policy is nationally beneficial and something to be embraced. It is hoped that the tenets of the policy will come to be known by all, much like the words of the national anthem. In observance of World Water Day 2014 on Saturday, March 22nd, the Dominica Water and Sewerage Company, Dowasco, joined the rest of the world in celebration last Thursday with a water exhibition. The government of Dominica, in conjunction with Dowasco, has placed considerable interest in the provisions of clean and healthy water to all Dominican citizens. Dowasco's public relations officer, Edward Regis, in an interview with GIS on Thursday, provided insight on Dowasco's efforts to elevate awareness on this vital substance through an exhibition. So we felt that it was important to create a greater awareness of the work that Dawasco does to bring water to people's homes. So the various booths um, represent the work of different departments at Dawasco. Um, we have our engineering department, our customer service department, our maintenance and operations department, even here the treatment facility and um, our lab. Our lab is a very important um, um, aspect in water treatment and ensuring that the water that we pipe to people's homes is of the very best quality. So we have all of this here on display. We also have a theater. Uh, we're showing the students a number of um, different films and features um, which reflects the importance of water preservation and water conservation. Over 600 visited the exhibition last week. The Public Relations Office expressed satisfaction for partnership with various water businesses and hopes that students will relay the message on water conservation for the betterment of future generations. Regis highlighted Friday's Customer Appreciation Day event, which was an opportunity for 10 lucky individuals to receive three months water free, all in the effort of raising awareness. The United Nations has designated the 22nd of March every year from 1993 to the observance of World Water Day. Meantime, Minister for Lands, Housing, Settlements and Water Resource Management, Honorable Reginald Austrey, made his address to the nation on World Water Day 2014. He voiced that recognizing the nexus between water and energy through the development of geothermal energy can stimulate social and economic growth. Right here in Dominica, we see the water energy nexus at work in the exploration and development of our geothermal energy resource. 
which has the potential to transform the Dominican economic landscape by making energy more affordable for the citizens of Dominica and provide a new source of revenue through the export of energy. The United Nations General Assembly declared the decade 2014-2024 as a decade of sustainable energy for all. The decade underscores the importance of energy issues for sustainable development and for the elaboration of the post-2015 development agenda. It highlights the importance of improving energy efficiencies, increasing the share of renewable energy and cleaner energy efficient technologies. Enhancing the efficiency of energy models will reduce the stress on the world water resources. And that's it for the English segment of the news. Mark for St. Louis is next with the Creole Highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à cette nouvelle en créole. Non moins, c'est Macpherson Saint Louis. Premièrement, le gouvernement dominique bien plaisir pour bon relation là, qui a existé entre pays dominique et puis China. Parole ça là, sorti au premier ministre Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt pendant réception qui tient pour te célébrer dix l'année depuis ces deux pays a établi relation diplomatique. Selon le premier ministre Skerritt, Dominique déjà réalisé développement en plusieurs secteurs. Si l'on bon relation salam, il dit Dominique qui continue à supporter One China Policy, bagay qui te d'accord les relations la Tessie. Premier ministre a fait parole qui coopération mutuelle entre Dominique et China. C'est ça, gouvernement qui a tout. Coopération Dominique et China qui continue, si l'on premier ministre Skerritt, ambassadeur de China pour Dominique Li Jianning, aussi One Support continue bon relation entre ces deux pays-là. En d'autres nouvelles, le ministre de l'Employment a continué et puis le National Employment Programme. La communauté mire ou a bénéficié des affaires ou les habitants agricoles qui ont des équipements qui ont servi à faire travailler. La présentation de ces équipements là pour place jeudi pendant une cérémonie en communauté. Le membre du Parlement, honorable Kelvin Daru, bien plaisir pour la communauté de la bénéficier. Nous avons fait une petite présentation pour ces jeunes femmes en la communauté mire. Ces books là, yo segue got uh, agriculture. Every through um, national employment program, no fair presentation got tools possible. So um, farming boots, um, sprayer, uh, cutler, every tout ces bagay ça là. Every ces books, ces books là, yo ni plot yo, oti la yo kal farm. Et puis program ça là, yo kal tapé en stipend, eh, en fortnightly stipend. You can tapé inputs for the Ministry of Agriculture. Have a, through Ministry of Trade, you need to tap the markets for your van producer. Um, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to do this for you. Because you're young, 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 c'est un secteur qui ka, qui nous nous nou développer further plus si si nous ne nou pas faire ça nous ne nous pas qu'à taper manger pour pour bâcon nous so nous qui continuons pour travailler well et puis c'est bougla en miro pour ensure yo qu'à taper ça yo ça yo besoin pour faire la développer famille on a nouvelle bureau gender mité en comité en place ça que advisory comité pour assister et puis implémentation gender policy Paul Sala sorti au chef du département bureau gender madame Rosie Brown ever implementé new gender policy à présent en l'année passée on l'a effort fait pour ça build up um, 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 uh, 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 avancer et faut pour mettre une structure en place pour aider avec avise national là comment pour pendant et faut là pour nous advance gender policy là So, c'est ça qui fait un, 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 un comité, National Advisory Committee on Gender Equity and Equality, c'est ça qui est là, en place pour ça, oui, pour ça faire ça. So, so il est aussi à, à, à dans l'opération gouvernement, même gouvernement aussi, office, various, various office gouvernement, département gouvernement, nous ni les gens qui identifient, identify, qui mettent en place pour yo ça wede en implementation um, national gender policy là 
Finalement, le ministre de l'Honorable Julius Timothy a fait parole pour le gouvernement Dominique Camille mis en place pour un service cardiology, ça c'est traitement maladie en chair. Le ministre Timothy a fait parole ça là pendant qu'il était adressé au Parlement la semaine passée. Il dit un bon système de santé, c'est fondation pour le développement social et économique. Honorable Timothy dit que plan ça là pour mettre des en place depuis l'année passée. Bagay pour moins de monde mort selon maladie en Tchèque. Le ministre de la Santé aussi déjà branché et puis en organisation internationale pour traitement des enfants plus aspects. Le ministre Timothy dit Dominique tout de suite qu'il y a un docteur qui a traité les monde et puis maladie en Tchèque. Mais c'est madame, ça c'est tout pour nous faire un coyote pour présent. Non, moi c'est Marc Fusson Au revoir. Is it better to eat raw or cooked spinach? Stay with us to find out. Dominica is blessed with an abundance of water, but getting it to your home is an expensive venture. You have a responsibility to conserve water, to use it wisely. Remember the old adage, you never miss the water till the well runs dry. Think water, think life. Spinach ranks as one of the most nutrient dense of all foods. At just 7 calories per uncooked cup, the dark leafy vegetable is an excellent source of folate antioxidants and vitamins K, C, A, E, and B6. It's also a good source of magnesium, riboflavin, and potassium. While cooking spinach somewhat degrades its folate and vitamin C content, it liberates the antioxidants, thereby increasing their bioavailability. As such, cooked spinach provides higher levels of vitamin A than its raw counterpart. Incorporating both raw and cooked spinach in your diet on a regular basis will help you make the most of all that this vegetable has to offer. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website at news.gov.dm. Friend us on our Facebook page and be sure to like our GIS Dominica fan page. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Mervyn Matthew. And I'm John Hector. Thank you for watching.